of the things. Um, and I see people logging in. Oh, welcome everybody to Tuesday Talks. It's so good to see everyone. Um, I know that people are logging in here at uh, Zoom. We also have, let's see if we're on YouTube. Yep, we're on YouTube. Hi everyone on YouTube. And we are also on Xiaotong. So I, if you're over there at Xiaotong, we're so glad to see you. I'm gonna put up a QR code right now in case you need, um, and let me know if you see it. There you go. If you need Chinese support, you can go to Xiaotong and scan this QR code. Um, and if you need um, Korean support, and then you can go to the YouTube link. So I'll give you a little bit of time to get over there. <laughs> and then while you're getting over there, um, just wanted to say another big, big thank you to our high schools that are supporting us. Um, these are high schools that are helping us get the word out. I know a lot of you are here and we thank you for that. Um, Tuesday Talks couldn't happen without you. So thank you so much for that. Um, Today, Tuesday Talks is being sponsored by Mr. View. He's going to show up today <laughs> at some point. So while you are watching Tuesday Talks, if you see him behind me, take a screenshot and post it. And those who post first will get a t-shirt and uh, we will announce winners next week. So that's our little fun activity for the day. Um, once again, thank you for joining for us for Tuesday Talks. I'm thrilled and delighted to have um, these wonderful um, colleagues and guests um, coming to share about a really important topic to me, um, soft skills. I think it's something that we at Initial View really, really care about, but also as a mother um, and an educator, this is something that I, I think is so hard to measure we see it and hear it, but it's really hard to talk about. And I'm really, really grateful for these colleagues to, to come together and have this discussion together about how to kind of think about soft skills, how to develop them, and how to showcase them. So without for, um, further ado, I'm going to give this over to them and have them introduce themselves. So go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Ruby Bhattacharya. I'm Director of International uh, Recruitment at Barnard College in New York City. Hi all, uh, my name is Jessica Griffiths. I am Associate Director of Admission at Rice University. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Hunkin. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Almas. I'm the Assistant Vice Provost and Director of Admissions at Washington University in St. Louis in, as our name suggests, St. Louis, Missouri. All righty, well, welcome everyone. <laughs> so um, as you can see on this, we have an agenda real quick, Oops, sorry. Um, and each of these schools are going to talk about their universities. We're going to talk about holistic admissions, which everyone on Tuesday Talks has heard about, but just a really quick overview. We'll talk about the difference between hard skills and soft skills, what it means to be authentic. We talk about that all the time. And um, talking a little bit about how you can tell your story on the off of your activities. And then we'll also talk about what to do after the talk. So um, Ruby, you want to take it away? Absolutely. So um, recognizing that we want to spend as much time as possible today talking about soft skills, we are each going to briefly introduce our colleges to you. Um, and then the hope is that you will want to continue to learn more about our colleges. And so while that won't be the main focus of our session today, we just wanted to each give you a quick introduction to each of our colleges. So with that, I'm happy to tell you a little bit about Barnard College. Barnard College was founded in 1889 as the sister college in affiliation to Columbia University in New York City, since at that time in the 1800s, women could not attend Ivy League institutions. So even though Columbia is co-ed today, Barnard remains as a liberal arts and science college for women within the Columbia University network. So we're a college for women of 2,600 students where our, women, our students are engaged in a rigorous curriculum designed to elevate the voices and perspectives of women, whether they're studying anything from neuroscience to economics, to English, to dance, to architecture. Um, our students also have access to clubs, courses, activities, 
um, Ivy League athletics as well through Columbia University, as well as access to lots of exciting and professional cultural opportunities because, by virtue of being in New York City. So that is a very, very quick introduction to Barnard College. I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. Great. So a little bit about Johns Hopkins University. We're in Baltimore, Maryland. So where you can see the star on the map, we're a little bit north of Washington, D.C. Um, on the East Coast. And we're very much in the city of Baltimore. So you can see some lovely beauty shots of Baltimore on the screen. We're in the northern part of the city on the Homewood campus. And that's where the Krieger School of Arts and Sciences and the Whiting School of Engineering are, where our students will be having their undergraduate graduate programs. Um, but one of the great things about Hopkins is you do get to take advantage of that whole university. Um, so on the bottom of the screen, you can see there's lots of different parts of the university from the School of Medicine, our uh, School of Public Health, uh, the Applied Physics Lab, our School of Education, all these different parts of the university. And our students are able to access those for research, internships, all these different parts, but you still have that really great undergraduate liberal arts education, um, but with a very strong emphasis on hands-on learning. Hopkins was founded as the U.S.'s first research university, and we also lead the U.S. in research spending. This past year, we spent about $2.6 billion on research, so very much happening in abundance at Hopkins, um, but like I said, you'll still have that very um, undergraduate-focused liberal arts education to build up some of those soft skills, even more that we'll be talking about, um, while having a really strong community. It's about a mid-sized community, about 5,600 undergraduate students. So getting to know one each other very well um, and being able to take advantage of all that Baltimore has to offer. So that's just a quick synopsis of uh, Hopkins and I will turn it over to our next university. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so a little bit about Rice. Um, and for all of us, we're doing the best to give you a high overview. And we really want to encourage you all to visit our websites because we each offer daily virtual information programming. So Rice University is a highly ranked, comprehensive undergraduate research institution. And um, we are located in Houston, Texas. We are, as the slide suggests, there's lots of great facts and stats about Rice. We're a fairly small undergraduate community with about 4,000 students. Um, we really strive to have an intimate and collaborative university experience. And so our total undergraduate body is about 4,000 students and that allows us to keep classes fairly small and also allows us to have a really great faculty to student ratio. So as per my colleagues previously, we're just scratching the surface here. So I encourage you all to visit uh, riceadmission.edu um, and learn more about all of the great things that Rice has to offer. And to close things out, I'll pass it to Emily. Great, thanks, Jessica. Um, so Washington University in St. Louis is a medium-sized private research university located, as I mentioned earlier, in St. Louis, Missouri. And our little more than 7,000 undergraduate students study in one of five different divisions. So we have programs um, in the College of Arts and Sciences, engineering, business, art, and architecture. Um, and I would characterize the WashU experience as one where there's a heavy emphasis on community and collaboration, as well as interdisciplinary study. More than 80% of our students will do more than just major in one area. So they'll really take classes across the university in a wide array of different disciplines and areas. And being a college student in St. Louis is a great opportunity to get involved in our community. We are a mid-sized city in the heart of the United States with lots to offer. All of the big city amenities you might enjoy like museums and the zoo and public transportation, but also very accessible and a very strong community feeling. But that's just a very quick take on WashU. We hope that you'll learn more at any of our institutions by going to our websites and engaging in further programming. On that note, I'm going to turn things back over to Jessica to tell you more as we get started. Thanks. So, you know, with soft skills and with, you know, Ness off the, I apologize, it's very early in Houston. <laughs> so, you know, as we are all in this virtual environment and attending these really important webinars, we really wanna make them engaging and interactive. So to start off today's session, we wanna 
get the, the chat going. So we like to know what does authenticity mean to you? So for those of you listening, um, use your chat function, make sure that you're replying all. So if you go to the two section, you're just going to want to drop down and make sure you're um, including everyone, but let's get the chat going. So when we say authenticity, what does it mean to you? And we'll kind of get the creative juices flowing. Maybe it's in the afternoon or evening or early in the morning for you. So what does everyone think? What does authenticity mean to you? Let's see it in the chat. And those of you who are watching on YouTube and Xiao Tong, you can also type there and we're, we're gonna pass them over here in Zoom. All right, so we have some answers and thank you Gloria for connecting all of the different platforms. It's really helpful. So um, we have original truth, um, telling real stories about yourself, being genuine, um, personality, question mark, um, truthful, passionate. So it's a lot about genuine, honesty, um, publicly accepted, professional, verified, being yourself. Panelists, anything you would kind of like to rhyme off or add here? Being one to be oneself, being real me. Not to lie on your resume, that you know, this is true, but you know, authenticity is much more than this as well. Uh, being yourself, yep. To understand oneself and be brave enough to face it. That's a really great point. Um, so that conviction we think is really important. And don't worry, you know, if you don't have an answer at this time, we're asking this question just to kind of gauge where everyone's at with the concept of authenticity. And, you know, hopefully by the end of this session, you'll have a, a better understanding of not only what authenticity means, but also what authenticity means to us at the institutions and how you can really use your application to show that. Being objective, resilient. Okay, great. Um, knowing yourself. Everyone, thank you so much for these great submissions. We love to see it. We'll wait about another minute for some more submissions. Okay. I'm trying to see if I miss any of them. And we do, so it means being honest to others and to yourself. I think we might have one more question. I apologize, Gloria, if you want to jump back. There we are. Great. <laughs> Perfect. So second question for us in the chat. So we're just, the first one was really just about authenticity overall. Um, but to kind of connect the two concepts, authenticity, and you know, today you're listening to some institutions talk about it. Why do highly selective institutions value authenticity in the admission process? So why do you think we care about authenticity? So let us know your thoughts in the chat again. So let's connect the two together. Why is it important for us to see authenticity in the admission process? Why would we care? Okay, so because the process is competitive, any other thoughts? And remember, um, right now, a lot of you are replying to the panelists, but you are welcome to apply to all so that you're, um... oh no, Gloria, sorry, you're saying something, but I think you're on mute. I don't think we have it set that way. Oh, then never mind. you're doing the right thing. <laughs> okay, and I missed a bunch of answers. So competitive, um, save time when checking information. Making sure you're the right fit for the university. Yes, Laura, that's a great, that's a great point um, to reflect our true identity. And then, you know, true identity and fit definitely correlate. We wanna make sure for you that our institution is the right place. Universities prefer to know the student. Um, they wanna know what students are interested in, why students chose to apply to that institution. Um, Alan thinks matching is important because of the fit between students and universities, again, with fits because it's important to know why somebody wants to go to that university, find the fit, basis of leadership. You guys are, you guys have obviously been attending other Tuesday talks. Everyone's got a really good handle on this. 
Um, having authenticity means one can truthfully demonstrate what you can contribute to the university. Um, really good answers to see your ability and potential. So I think I can speak on behalf of the other panelists that we're really excited to dig even deeper because you all seem to have a, a pretty good handle um, on the connection between authenticity and why highly selective institutions value authenticity. So hope that you know everyone's feeling engaged and ready to learn more. Um, we will be doing more chat questions. We just want to keep this engaging so you feel like you know you're participating, not just listen to us talk for 30 minutes. And uh, we will officially kick off the formal presentation. I will pass it off to Ruby. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Gloria. Uh, so we want to speak about how we review applications. You know, when, when we're doing these sessions, students come and sit in the audience because they're often hoping that we will reveal the secrets to highly selective admissions, that we will provide what the magic formula is, that if I do get this test score and I've earned these grades, then therefore I will be admitted to XYZ University. So first and foremost, we want to address that for all of the institutions represented here today, we all practice what we call holistic admissions. Holistic admissions is probably a phrase you're hearing quite frequently as you are attending different information sessions, hearing different admissions presentations. So let's break down what that actually means. Um, sometimes when we say holistic admissions, you know, students say, oh, okay, so it means that I can have really bad grades, but I can be really involved and the university will really like that. Let's not to go into that. Let's talk about what it actually is. So I always like to speak about holistic admissions in the context of making a puzzle. When you're making a puzzle, you have lots of different pieces. They're different sizes, they're different shapes. When you're making a puzzle, you never say, this is my favorite piece of the puzzle, or this is the best piece of the puzzle. It's really not about each individual piece. It's about how pieces fit together and the bigger picture they're trying to convey. And that's absolutely true of your application. For all of us, we read applications. When we're reviewing applications, we don't say, this is my favorite piece of the application. It's never about one piece. That's never the reason why a student is admitted. It's never the reason why a student was not offered admission. All of us, if you add up our collective years in admissions, we've been doing this for a very long time. We've read several thousands upon thousands and thousands of applications. Um, and I can assure you that in that time, we have never sat in our admissions committees and said, wow, look at that test score or wow, look at that particular activity. It's never about one thing. It's about how all of these pieces work together and what it says about you in that whole picture. So definitely keep that in mind. It's never about one individual piece. It's how the pieces work together. When thinking about context, now this is a word that we use very frequently. It's really important to think about um, how we put your puzzle pieces together. So context means the way I read your application is not the same way I read the next student's application. What do I mean by that? When I say that, students say, hey, is that fair? That what do you mean the way you review my application is not the same way you review another student's? Context is very much driven by what opportunities you've had. Thinking about your family, did your parents attend university? Did they attend university in the US or elsewhere? Um, we're asking these questions, not because we want to know these, these facts about you, but we use this information to understand your context, your story. Um, so in thinking about the curriculum, it's not that we prefer one curriculum over another. If I see that you are at a national curriculum school, I have an understanding of what is available to you versus what is not available to you. I can only expect that you are taking advantage of what is available to you. So that's a little bit about how we put your puzzle pieces together. And then finally, COVID-19, this, this global pandemic is very much a part of all of your stories, regardless of where you're tuning in from. Everyone in this world is experiencing this global pandemic, but at the same time, we're all experiencing it a little bit differently. And so that might help you to understand context a little bit more, recognizing we are all human beings living on this planet, but we're all experiencing life differently. And so keep that in mind as you're thinking about putting your story together. What are the things that you need for us to understand to really understand how to put your puzzle pieces together? So that is a little quick overview of holistic admissions, but now we're gonna dive into deeply talking about how soft skills help us to put your puzzle pieces together.
Thanks so much, Ruby. And um, today we're talking about soft skills and hard skills and holistic admissions. And first, let's take a step back and, and think about what some of these um, are. So you might be thinking about hard skills as uh, one way to think about hard skills is to think of them as measurable or quantifiable achievements or talents. You could see that perhaps in your transcript, which um, grades you've earned, if you've taken standardized testing, um, any awards or accomplishments, languages or technical skills, those could all be um, determined, you might interpret them as, as hard skills. And in the holistic review process, admissions committees are hoping to understand you comprehensively, both through your hard skills and your soft skills. And so what are soft skills? Soft skills are your personal traits or characteristics or attributes that demonstrate how you engage in the world and engage with other people. Things like self-direction, organization, leadership, um, empathy, initiative, problem solving. These are different ways that, that you both contribute to the world around you and also demonstrate your own personality and traits. And so hard skills and soft skills are important in the admissions process because as Ruby mentioned when talking about holistic admissions, we're trying to get to understand you and what you will bring to our community and what kind of classmate you'll be, what kind of person you'll be in the residence halls and in student life, doing research, wherever your interests may take you. And there are many different places in the application process where we have an opportunity to get to know more about your hard skills and your soft skills. So if you think about the application itself, uh, if you think about components like your essay, your activities list, something like an interview can be a really great place where someone uh, on an admissions committee can get to know more about, for example, your soft skills at, through an anecdote you might share about an experience or something that interests interests you, that demonstrates how you interact with other people and where your skills are. This is a long list. Admissions committees certainly don't expect that any of us, whether admissions people or prospective college students, have all of these different attributes and characteristics in their application. Uh, but certainly you can think of these as examples of the types of soft skills or attributes or characteristics that we're seeking to identify in our process because we're all human and we're building communities on our campus. We wanna bring people together who are going to contribute to that campus experience and all of the great um, knowledge that happens on our campus as well. If we wanna go to the next slide, we have another chat question for you. If you wanna share what's a place or how can you demonstrate in your application your soft skills? Take a moment and reflect on this. If you wanna share in the chat, you can. How might you demonstrate authentically that word we were talking about earlier, your soft skills in your application? We'll give folks a, a minute to respond here. An anecdote in the essays. Yep, es I'm seeing a lot of essays and stories. And I would say both written essays as well as something like an interview could be a great place where you can tell anecdotes and stories too. Um, personal statements. Lots of folks sharing in places where, where they have um, space story. I'm seeing lots of Lots of good answers here talking about how you can uh, demonstrate your soft skills um, in the application. Personal reflection, personal statement and in interviews, teacher recommendations, yes. So teacher recommendations are a great example of where soft skills can come through in an application. What's important is that's not you, the applicant necessarily demonstrating that, right? Because your teacher recommendations will be written by your teachers, but your teachers can definitely talk about you and share stories about you and with you um, that, that help us get to know you a little bit better as well. Um, and if we wanna go to the next slide, there's one more chat question. And that is um, sort of a building upon the last question. I kind of combined them here, that's on me, but what parts of the, of the application can best highlight your hard skills and your soft skills? 
And I don't want to forget those hard skills too. Of course, they're absolutely important in our process, but I think a lot of us have a good understanding of what those components of the application are. And Ruby certainly highlighted them as well. So anything anyone wants to add into the chat, parts of the application that you can best highlight your hard skills and soft skills. I'm seeing some folks chime in with some standardized testing as an example of a hard skill. Certainly that's one. Any other places? Some examples I would um, I would offer up. We've already mentioned, but um, your your transcript could be a good example of your uh, of your of your hard skills for soft skills. Things like uh, essays. Um, your if you do an interview, uh, which can be a great way to show to show your soft skills. Letters of recommendation, uh, which are coming from others, but reflect your soft skills. I would also throw out there your activities list. Yes, exactly. I'm seeing some folks throw that in the in the comments as well. Clubs, activity section can show both hard and soft skills. That is exactly where we're headed next. So I, I appreciate that comment from our from our attendee. The activities list can also be a great place where you can demonstrate this. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Jenny. Great. So yes, your activities list can sort of be a hidden gem of your application. Our minds first went to the essays, teacher letters, your transcript, all those places you might be showing your hard and soft skills, but your activities list, so much potential to showcase all of those different skill sets um, sharing with us through your application. So what are we doing with your activities list? What is that really helping us with? So it's answering some of the basic questions of how are you engaged outside the classroom? Just giving us an idea of how are you spending your time beyond going to school and studying and sleeping, um, but also helping us get that fuller picture of you. Where are your interests? How have you explored those? How are you making an impact or taking initiative in your community in various different ways? But they're also a place for us to sort of picture you as a thriving member of our living and learning communities. Part of what we are talking about with that authenticity is finding students who are going to be a great fit and match for our universities. And the activities list can provide a lot of insight into who you are as a community member because we don't expect you to do those exact same things that you've done throughout high school when you come to our universities. Part of the excitement of college is that it is so many new and different opportunities, but the way that you engage as a community member, the way that you try to have that positive impact on those around you, those are things that are gonna travel with you. Those soft skills, those collaboration, the empathy, all those things are things I'll travel with you no matter what the tangible activity you're involved with. So being able to tell us not what, but also how you are engaged with those activities is so important in the activities list. So if we go to the next slide, um, we're going to sort of show you what this actually looks like on an activities list. Because I know when you're typing in the common application or the coalition application, wherever you might be filling in those activities, it's a little bit ambiguous of uh, what is this going to look like? You just feel like you're filling out boxes, but it actually comes together into what you might expect a resume to look like. Um, so we have this sort of polished end product where we get to see all of the different things that you are doing. If you're thinking, huh, I had no idea, you can hit the preview button on your common or coalition application or what other app whatever application platform you're using most likely and see what this will look like on our end. Um, but there's a lot of different things you'll be filling out. There's different categories that you share uh, where that activity falls in. And there's so many different ones in the common application. I believe there's over 20 to 30 different categories. Um, so hopefully really expanding out what you're thinking of as an activity. It's not just a club at school. It can be so many different ways that you are engaging with the world around you. Um, and we get some of those sort of more quantifiable things out of the way of when and how much are you doing it, of how many hours per week, what years from school are you doing it. Um, they also ask questions, are you doing it during school break um, or throughout the entire year? So we get a lot of those sort of when and where you're doing it through those. But then there's the really important piece, which is sort of those um, 
wordier pieces, which is the description of what you're doing. So we're going to dig into a little bit more of this description writing um, to see how we can showcase those soft skills most effectively, because one of the challenges of the activities list is that it has a very strict character count. Um, the application you're using will cut you off when you have reached that. It does vary application to application, but they're meant to be brief descriptions, which is a great place for you to showcase your excellent communication skills, how to be concise. We recognize this is a challenge though, so we want to dig into this a little bit more and sort of look at some tips. So if we can go to the next slide, um, we can look at an example of a single activity from a student and how they showcase their description. And we can sort of see um, where are they bringing in some of those different skill sets. So I'll read each description aloud. And then um, in the chat, if you could vote, which one did you think was more effective in showcasing some of those skills and helping us get to know the student as a future community member. So the description for A reads, um, volunteer barks. I volunteer at a local animal rescue center once a week. I would help walk the dogs, clean kennels and assist at adoption days. And then B, uh, the description reads, volunteer, Baltimore Animal Rescue and Care Shelter. Helped dogs socialize through play and exercise and kept their kennels clean given responsibilities during adoption days to manage adoption forms. All right, so if you have thoughts on which one did you find to be more effective in learning about um, student skills and giving us more information about envisioning them as a future community member. Okay, so we're getting mostly the same answer, a few different thoughts here and there. But the majority of you are feeling that B was a little bit more effective. Um, there was definitely a few folks who felt A was great. And I will say both of these are completely fine. I don't want anyone to walk away thinking, oh no, if I did one or the other, my application would be terrible. No, these are both completely fine. We're really talking about how to maximize and how to really um, go that full extra squeezing in all of the information into these limited character counts. But both are really great um, understandings of what the student is doing and how they're engaging. But I think one thing that you can do to help fit in more of the sort of soft skills and uh, the way that you're going about your activities is by, you can get rid of some of those I statements and just go straight for the resume language. So um, we understand sort of what that looks like. And we know that uh, you are writing in this specific way in your essays. Of course, you'll be using full sentences, using lots of I statements and whatnot. Um, but in the second one, B, we get a little bit more um, understanding of what the responsibilities the students was taking on, maybe some of those organization skills from the soft skills of managing the different forms. And so we're really able to see um, a, more of what their day-to-day -day looked like. Uh, again, both are really great. Um, also, just a quick tip, always sort of give us that full picture whenever you can, spelling out acronyms that you wouldn't know unless you lived in Baltimore like me, um, but helping us understand more of the details can help us understand how you've developed through these activities. And you can even spell that out with utilizing and talking about those soft skills that you've gained. Maybe they were collaborating with fellow volunteers that they could um, fit in. But again, it is a limited character account. So you really have to uh, choose what you're sharing with us in these. You can't emphasize every single soft skill you've ever gained through an activity because that would be probably many different things, but really trying to highlight sort of the most important and what that actual day-to-day -day experience was like. So now I will turn it back to Ruby to talk about our next slide. Thanks, Johnny. Um, so Jenny's, we want to really talk through you know, some of the things that Jenny's just spoken about, um, really thinking through with the activities list, what are the things that we see students do really well, um, but given that all of us have read thousands upon thousands of applications, what are some of the common mistakes that we see? And, you know, like Jenny said, with those two that we just looked at, both are, are, are fine, but one takes it a step further and really helping the reader to understand more about who you are and just to have a greater understanding 
of your context. Both are delivering the same information. It's really about the utilization of those soft skills to really convey just a little bit more. So in thinking about that, let's walk through some of the things that we've seen students do really well, but also some of the things that we've seen that have been a little bit more on the mistake side. Um, so we just talked about this maximizing the allotted space, but remembering as well that more does not mean better. Nothing in this process is about quantity. Keep that in mind. Just because you did more doesn't make you a stronger applicant. So you do not need to fill in every one of those activity spaces. That is not the expectation. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Something that we you know, really hope that you will think about is how you are spending your time outside of your studies. You are not just a student. You are a dynamic human being with likes and dislikes and interests and feelings, and you have people that you care about. We want to know about who you are, not just in a classroom when you're being graded. Um, so thinking about family responsibilities, home responsibilities, all of those factor into how you are spending your time. I always like to say we're asking you to think about how you spend your time when you're not studying, when you're not sleeping. So for your activities list, it is not an effective uh, use of your activities list to list your coursework and tell us more about what you're doing in school. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking to how you spend your time when you're not studying. So keep that in mind. Um, do share how and why you learned from your experiences. So again, this is not about quantity, but at the same time, it's also not about what you do. I think there's a perception that when we look at the activities list, we go in with a checklist that we have very clear expectations that when I read your application, I want to see, did they do service? Did they go to an academic summer program? Did they play a sport? Do they play an instrument? I have no expectations. I go into every application not knowing what to expect because I really want to get to know you authentically. So with your activities list, it's never about what you do. You know, students will say to us, well, I did XYZ summer program at ABC University. Is that going to make me a stronger applicant? To be perfectly honest, it's not the fact that you did that summer program that stands out to us. It actually doesn't stand out to us. I'm going to just say that up front. Um, what stands out to us is if you learn something at that, a, that summer program. So really reflect on what did you learn during that time? Did you learn something about yourself? Did you learn about a new subject? How did you grow as a result of that? That's what I want to hear about. That's what sets your application apart, not just the fact that you did the program. Um, this is never about you just going through the motions or doing a checklist. There's nothing like that. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. It's the intellectual depth that distinguishes your application. Keep in mind the number of hours per week and do be realistic. Um, the example that Jenny showed you listed the hours per week that the student was spending at the animal shelter. Um, just remember that uh, we, do, we do expect these hours to kind of add up in, in thinking about the number of hours in a week. Sometimes you know, all of us have seen applications where when you add it up, you realize, wait, that's not a week. That's like a whole year. The student has clearly miscalculated the number of hours. And so some of you mentioned, don't exaggerate. This is a great space to keep that in mind. Do not exaggerate the number of hours because guess what? We, we know math, we have calculators. We can see that, wait a minute, that doesn't add up. This can't be right. Um, and so don't even have that thought enter our minds. Just be realistic. At the same time, it doesn't need to be a science. You don't need to you know, start calculating when you're taking care of your sister. Okay, how long have I been doing this? You don't need to do that either. So we're just asking you to give us uh, you know, the most uh, approximate estimation. So keep that in mind. Now, in terms of things that we have seen students make mistakes on, this is something that we really want to spend time just quickly emphasizing. Please utilize the confines of the application. Use the space that's given in the application. What we're seeing more and more students do, frankly, incorrectly, is try to create puzzle pieces that don't exist. And what I mean by that is that they're saying, you know, they're sending us, here's all of my important information. I've, in, I've created a website for you to see all of this, or I've created a Google Drive, or I've created a LinkedIn profile um, with all of your credentials, activities, and awards. Um, please do not do this. This is not helpful because in our processes, we do not review these. And so it's really unfortunate. Not only are you spending time, some of you are spending even money on these uh, different sources, we don't look at them. If you send us a website link, we are very unlikely, if at all, to click on them. 
I will tell you outright, I, I, I don't click on them. Um, and so I will tell you that, you know, really spend time on what's in your application. Now, if you think about, if you send me lots and lots and lots of puzzle pieces, um, but there's one puzzle piece that to you means a lot because it's the one that you've really shared something critical about your authentic self. If you've sent me too many puzzle pieces, that important piece is going to get lost. So don't let your important pieces get lost by sending us too many things. So do not rely on these platforms because we're not going to look at them. Use what's in the application. If you want us to see it, make sure it's in the application. Do not make standardized testing an extracurricular activity. Our institutions are test optional. If you are not able to access testing, do not stress about it. Do not worry. Do not try booking flights to fly all over the world to gain access to testing. We are in a global pandemic. There are actual safety um, issues with sitting for these tests. So do not feel as though you need to sit for these tests. But we're also talking about beyond just the SAT and ACT. We get a lot of questions about SAT subject tests. We know that these tests have been discontinued. There is what, one more testing, I think, available to students. You do not need to go rushing to go and try and take as many of these as possible in June. Um, in our processes, these are not important tests. Um, at Barnard, we actually don't even look at them if you take them, so you don't need to take them at all for Barnard. Um, and I know that there are other colleagues on this panel who, are, who have a similar policy. Um, same thing with AP exams. These are not required parts of the application and don't impact our review. And so keep that in mind. Um, you do not need to take more tests. Having more tests does not make you a better applicant. Those are, yes, those hard skills, but just the fact that you took more tests is not impressive to us. I'll just outright say that too right now. Um, do not include certificates in your application. Again, more things does not make for a stronger application. The more certificates you include, um, the more likely the important pieces are to be lost. We do not need certificates in your application. And then there's no need to include any achievements from primary school. We're really looking to understand who you are within the context of your secondary school years. Anytime I've mentioned the students then ask questions about what about this one thing I did in grade eight or grade nine? Um, you know, is that something I should include? If it was really important to you and that experience led to your growth and really shaped your trajectory for secondary school, you can introduce it, but it shouldn't be the focal point of your application, telling about, about this one thing you did at age 10 or 12. Um, and so keep that in mind. Um, so those are some things that we hope that you will definitely keep in mind um, as you approach your application, um, because really keeping this in mind, I think will, will give you the tools that you need to strengthen your application and really put your best foot forward. I'm going to hand it back over. I think I'm handing it over to, is it to Jessica? Yep, correct. Thank you, Ruby. So that concludes kind of the more formal part of our presentation. So we hope that you all had a lot of great takeaways. I know there was some really great gems shared by the panelists. Um, and to kind of conclude the presentation, we have another chat question for you. So you know, thinking about everything you've learned in the past 30 minutes, what are some ways that you can be authentic in your application? So you all know what to do. Um, hit the chat, um, let us know your thoughts. So what are some ways that you can be authentic in your application and let us know your thoughts? And I'm gonna scroll down. We know there's been a lot of chat questions. Okay, essay, great. I was like, it's okay, guys, no pressure. Um, knowing yourself and being present, we won't spend too much time on these chat questions just because we actually wanna to get to your questions, so no worries. Um, now they're coming really fast and I'm trying to like read them. All right. Um, okay, admitting some unavoidable accidents, um, knowing myself and being present, um, essays and resumes, including your true self, um, sharing more details, you know, being honest and not exaggerating. And I think that like through these various answers, you're like touching on two great points in terms of, again, that authenticity piece being one, but also, you know, utilizing various components of the application um, in another. And so remember, you know, authenticity isn't just about we don't want authenticity because it's like the antithesis of a lie. It's also, again, it's really, really, really about fit. 
um, more than anything. We're not trying to like catch you and we're detectives and it's like a way. It really is about, there's so many great educational opportunities here in the US and there's a lot of amazing institutions. We know our institutions really well. If we know you well, then we're helping to kind of, you know, make sure that the right, somewhat the right people are in the right place. So um, it's a way that we can help you. So authenticity is important because it helps us understand as we've talked about through the session, if you're gonna be the right fit for our community. Um, and our last slide. So some next steps, um, spring and summer are such a crucial time for you all to, um, you know, take some time to reflect. And so we have these questions listed here. Um, and over the summer months, as you're maybe starting to write your personal essays um, or your personal statements or your supplementary prompts, these are some questions you can maybe journal about. If you want to just write, like answer the question yourself, maybe journal, um, but also some questions. Maybe you want to have conversations with your friends and family. You know, maybe you want to ask them, like, how have you seen me grow over the past few years? Have I changed? You know, journaling is one great component for that self-reflection, but also having the conversation with maybe your counselors, maybe your teachers, maybe your parents, again, your friends um, or any other peers. So each of these questions we think will really help tease out some of those soft skills that we were talking about. So you may find and hear people saying things um, you yourself may begin to recognize, you know, based on that list we provided, oh, this actually is an example of this. And as you really start to work through these questions, you may find that it helps lead to a great essay prompt topic. And that's a great answer for you. Or you may be able to then see, oh, I really changed when I went to this. And then that's going to change, um, you know, how you may write about it in your list of activities. So these are fantastic open-ended questions to really help you get to know yourself a little bit better. Um, and to help you prepare for a really strong, authentic application that we all look forward to reading. So uh, panelists, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to turn it over. I think that's the end of my... Oh, great. Questions. Yeah, yeah. we're going <laughs> to we're going to go ahead and move into questions um, and because we do have just a little bit of time left and we want to make sure that we cover questions um, as best as we can. So um, I'm going to stop this uh, screen share just so we can see each other's faces here as we talk. Um, so uh, I just love the authenticity piece. We talk about authenticity. We've tried to kind of ask, what does that mean? Um, I, I want to say, like, I saw a lot of chat um, chatter about being honest. And, and one of the things is, I think sometimes in, in this world of admissions, we're worried about, you know, cheating or like, you know, being dishonest. And sometimes authenticity is not actually about not being dishonest, but it's actually showcasing pieces that you might think, I think the uh, pitfall a lot of people have is thinking about, um, I want to only show the good parts of me and I don't want to, uh, admissions officers are not going to care about this part of me. And I think Ruby did a great job talking a little bit about how, you know, when you, when you talk about um, how you care for your family, that's actually something really important. And especially if it's something that's taking up your time and really important to you, something that you should be sharing. So I think when we talk about authenticity, we want to like not just talk about not cheating or not being honest, but really kind of reflecting on what are all the things that are super important to me and that identify who I am. So, um, and we have a few questions. I think there is a, there are some questions about institutions and I'm gonna skip those for now because all of you, as we always say on Tuesday Talks, please go to these admissions <laughs> offices websites and their virtual events. They have some great, very specific ones. So we're not gonna to talk too much about that. Um, I, I wanna uh, ask the question and we often talk about, you know, kind of this whole, how many, like what's well-rounded? Do you want the well-rounded applicant or do you want the more focused applicant? Like what, I think a lot of people are worried like how many activities should one have to be competitive um, and, and how that kind of fits into those puzzle pieces. So I don't know if that made sense, that question was clear. Anyone want to take that? <laughs> I can start it off, thanks Gloria. Um, we get this question pretty frequently, you know, in terms of thinking about uh, the well-rounded applicant versus what we, we sometimes refer to as the pointy applicant. They're very particular in a, in a particular area that they're very pointed in their interests. Um, we have no preference. 
um, that we are not looking for a particular kind of applicant, a particular kind of student. It's really that we are, you know, we are trying to craft diverse community at, on our campuses. And so every person does not need to be well-rounded. Every person does not need to be pointed in their interests. Um, we also recognize that you have you know, what we call intersectional identities, recognizing that you have many layers to who you are. Like we said, you are not just a student in China. You are not just a girl in Korea. You are so much more than that. And so really recognizing in your application, we're hoping that you are showcasing all parts of your identity, not because you are trying to impress us, but because we truly want to know who you are and what kind of community you will be, community member you will be inside and outside of the classroom on our campuses. We don't just wanna know, okay, well, I see that you get A's on your transcript. So that means you will be a student from China who will get A's at Barnard College. That's not what, it's not this, you know, very linear, you know, that if you were this, then you will be this, like Jenny said earlier. We really just want to get a sense of, you know, how you take advantage when you have opportunities in front of you, um, how you impact the people around you, um, what are the kinds of questions you like to ask. Those are all the sorts of things that we're hoping to understand from your application. And you notice in the things that I just listed, I didn't say, well, I want to know what kind of test scores do you get? What kind of grades do you get? What kind of numbers do you score under pressure? I didn't ask any of those questions because those are questions that even approach my mind when I'm reading your application. So I hope that that helps in understanding and distinguishing between the hard skills and the soft skills and how we approach your application. Wonderful, thank you. So um, we have some questions about like um, showcasing your authenticity when it comes to, like, I think people are worried about um, their story being too generic. Like, is my story, uh, even though I feel like I'm being authentic and maybe even like really an emotional kind of thing for me, does it seem generic to you? Like how, how do we give details or stand out in the process? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay, I was gonna say go ahead too, Jenny. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think in the in the act of being authentic, um, sharing oneself, um, being open and um, reflecting, not in a, in a factual sense, although certainly, but sort of the genuine feelings and emotions and joys and and, and habits of someone um, in the application. I think that that does come through, and and I think the 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 risk for an applicant is in preparing an application in a way that they believe an admissions committee wants to read it, right? So doing, whether that's the actually doing activities because they think admissions committees want to see them or writing an essay in a particular way because they think admissions committees want to read something like that or being interested in something. Um, if it's not really a reflection of the student's own interests and, and desires and, and future goals or whatever might be, um, that will come through as inauthentic or um, less compelling. So I think the strongest thing you can do as, a, as an applicant or prospective applicant is be yourself. And it's cheesy and it's cliche and you hear it a lot, but it's true. I think if you pursue the things that you're genuinely interested in, whatever they may be, whether that is a whole variety of different kinds of things, or you have one thing you really love and you spend a lot of time doing that or studying that, and that is who you present and that is what you share with us in the application. That is the best way to stand out in our process is to be yourself. Yeah, I'll just add on, there was something said in the chat earlier to one of our chat questions, I think from Heidi that said, focus on insights and feelings instead of pure descriptions of events. And I think that goes to like what Emily was saying of you bringing yourself into it is what's going to make it unique. There's a lot of things having all of us gotten to read applications from all over the world, from so many different places. There's a lot of things that a lot of high school students are doing that doesn't make them less valid or less great for us to hear about. Um, a lot of people might be doing debate or helping out with grandparents or whatever it might be, but you're doing that. So what did that mean for you? And that's how that becomes unique because you're the only person doing that and having that exact experience. So it's really about communicating what that means to you, bringing in what you developed from it, because 
as we are also saying, doing just XYZ summer program isn't going to be this green flag of, oh good, it's what did you actually get from that? So really bringing in those insights and feelings beyond just, I have done X, Y, and Z, and therefore I'm qualified for your university. We want to go much deeper and that's what's going to help you to stand out and develop your application. I think um, there, there is a question about like demonstrating soft skills, even in your award section and how, how one could do that. And um, I know um, this is kind of, you know, we talked about the character limits and how small <laughs> these sections are. Um, I, and we had talked as a group earlier and Jess, I think you had an example of where there was something that happened and it was, it was highlighted in the application, but then they were able to kind of share about it in an interview. So I don't know if you could share that example to kind of give color on how you can maybe list something yet develop it. Yeah, um, I think, you know, a few cycles back, we had a really uh, fantastic example of, you know, what Gloria is suggesting. And um, it was a student who was from China. I think it was a tier three city and they were at a national high school. And I think as Ruby had mentioned, you know, context is so important. And we know that what you're able to do at different schools and even within the same city is really different. Um, so when we're looking at this application and the list of activities, he mentioned that he had started a book club and book clubs are great. We love book clubs. And I'm sure um, students maybe think, well, it's just a book club. It's not uh, coding platinum and it's not USAMO and it's not like a, a, an award. But so this, this student was talking about this book club and we were like, he seems to really care about this book club. Like, and it doesn't have thousands of members, but the student had so much conviction and showed those soft skills as they were writing about it. So he had also presented an initial view. Um, so we were like, he really seems to care about this book club. Let's, let's watch the interview and see how he talks about it. And when we heard the student and how much pride he had in growing the book club from him and his best friend to its third member and eventually grew to 200 students, the way he talked about getting that third member was infectious. For us as a committee, we're like, that's the type of student we want on our campus because that soft skill was so evident in his written that when we saw him say it, it was just, it kind of sealed the deal for us. So I think the book club is a really good example of something that, you know, you might not think as an applicant listening today that a top, a highly selective institution is going to care about a, a book club. But when you're able to infuse that personality and that feeling and that emotion, it really helps us understand your soft skills and if you're the right fit for our institution. So we loved seeing the, the those puzzle pieces, kind of bringing everything together, together, work yeah. together to get, create a complete picture. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. And um, there are somebody's asking, you know, how do we develop these? How do we develop soft skills? And, you know, do you know of a training program for it? Do you know, <laughs> do you know how how to get better at it. The fact that you're even reflecting on that question, guess what? You have soft skills. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the fact that you're, you're absorbing what you're hearing today, you're processing it, um, and you're now thinking about what, you know, what my next step should be, you know, you have soft skills. You already, you come with these soft skills. It's about really developing them and really elevating them in a way that you can share that in your application. So no, there is no school you can go to. There's no after school program. There's no tutor you can get for your soft skills. This is about you just taking the time to reflect on how you learn, how you grow. And if you are asking yourself these questions and being able to jot these down or journal them, like we talked about before, you know, those homework questions that we had posed um, you will, re if you are making sure that those are the focal point within your application, rather than having the focal point be, did you see my SAT score? Did you see my AP exam? That's not the focal point of your application. That's not what's important. It's these soft skills and how you elevate them and share them that that's important. So you have the soft skills. It's really about making sure that you are just taking the time to, to reflect um, because that level of reflection, that is what distinguishes your application. And I think, um, you know, asking questions is one of the key ways to develop soft skills. Um, having dialogue and conversation with lots of people is a way to develop soft skills. And that doesn't mean that you are like, have to be a really loquacious, talkative person. You're, you're just 
willing to have like bridge, like make a bridge. Um, and that's what admissions is about. You're, you're trying to create this bridge with the admissions officer so they understand who you are. And that's why we do these Tuesday talks. So keep tuning in every week. There is going to be these little gems where they will develop your soft skills. <laughs> and, um, and you'll want to also, after a Tuesday talk, reach out because that is another way, like engaging more and more with current students, with alumni, with, um, with your counselors, with admissions counselors. That is a way that you can kind of continue this um, understanding of what it means to be a whole person and not just your grades, not your, just your test scores, not even just your activities, right? It is about yeah, who you are as a person, how you're gonna fit into a community. So once again, please reach out to these admissions officers um, especially if you're interested in their institutions, they have lots of things where they can point you to so that you can get to know their schools better. Um, and in the meantime, screenshot, make sure you post it. We'll be looking for those posts. Um, and then we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great afternoon, evening, night, morning, wherever you are. Bye, everyone.